Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for more successful experiments next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Dr. Kurt Connors, a brilliant herpetologist, biochemist, and former army medic. Really, a great guy. He's also a father figure to Peter Parker. Wait, oh no, oh no, something horrible's gonna happen to him, isn't it? Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need medicinal skills with potions and brews to heal things. Next, we need to screw that up, accidentally turning yourself into a giant monster man. Finally, we need to talk to other lizards. After you bite a co-worker's face off, you might have trouble talking to the other scientists. For Zenats, we'll be using the standard point right from the player's handbook rule. For Zenats, if you want, just keep those multi-classing minimums in mind. Wisdom will be number one. Medicine and animal handling are both wisdom skills, and you've got doctorates in both. Intelligence next, you have a doctorate, so you've got to be pretty good at studying. Strength after that, once you've ruined your entire life, you get pretty good at unarmed attacks. Follow that up with constitution, lizards are hard to kill, and you are a lizard. Kinda. Charisma is a bit low. You're not great at talking to people, but not really bad. We're gonna dump dexterity though. Scientists aren't generally known for their gymnastic abilities. Hey, I know you hate humans. Who doesn't, right? Humans stink and we should avoid using them at all costs. It's not like every single fictional universe has a human equivalency, and that most of the main characters are all humans. So if I were to accurately try and recreate them, I would have to use human. That's not a thing, right? We're gonna use custom lineage then, which isn't anything like variant human or lizard folk. Kurt can turn into a lizard, but he's not permanently a lizard. So if we were a lizard folk, we wouldn't be able to go back to being friendly neighborhood Kurt. I'm also not making Vulture and Aracocra or Rhino Alinius. That's a race I made up of Rhino people. Take the athlete feat for plus one to your strength and dexterity, the ability to stand up with five feet of movement instead of half, jumping with five feet of run up instead of 10, and you can climb without extra movement to scale buildings to keep up with the spider you're trying to eat. Do lizards eat spiders? Yes, they do. Herpetology fact. You're welcome. Bump your wisdom with your two free points, take athletics for your skill of choice, and build your own background for medicine and nature so you can understand how to combine yourself with the Geico mascot. We're going to kick things off as a druid, letting you grab two skills from the druid list, like animal handling and survival, to track down your favorite animal in their natural habitat. Druids speak druidic, which is a special language only druids know. Can you imagine if you accidentally went to a Bartrachology conference when you meant to go to a Saurology conference? Talk about awkward. You get spells and cantrips. Guidance and resistance gives a creature a d4 for ability checks and saving throws respectively for some basic vitamins and minerals. Animal friendship lets you force a wisdom saving throw on a beast, failing that they're friendly to you for 24 hours, helping make your test subjects a little more cooperative. Speak with animals lets you speak with animals for an hour, just ask the lizards to drop their tails nicely. Purify food and drink lets you make water potable and food edible. You can't run a lab without a filtration system. Cure wounds heals 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier as an action. Hopefully there aren't any horrifying consequences for this miraculous medicine. Second level druids get horrifying consequences to their miraculous medicine with wild shapes and moon druids can get more horrifying with combat wild shape and circle forms as per usual with moon druids let's explain it all at once so that i don't explain wild shapes and then be like actually wait no it's different for you you can turn into a beast of challenge rating one or lower that doesn't have a flying or swimming speed as a bonus action and stay in that shape for a number of hours equal to half your druid level you get to keep your soft stats so intelligence wisdom and charisma but take the hard stats of the beast strength dexterity and constitution finally you can heal 1d8 as a bonus action spending a spell slot, which means that you can bite as a giant lizard and regenerate in the same round. You might be shocked, but giant lizard is probably the closest beast shape at the moment to a giant lizard. Who would have thought? For this level spell, long strata lets you give a creature 10 feet more of movement speed, and it doesn't require concentration, so you can even have a different spell up too. Also worth noting, you can concentrate on spells while you're in your wild shapes, but you can't cast new spells, so that will make you a faster lizard, like the Stenosaurus similis, also known as the spiny-tailed iguana, which can run at 21 miles per hour. Two her Pathology facts, you're welcome. Third level druids get second level spells. Bark skin sets a creature's AC to 16 for an hour, depending on your concentration, so that means that your giant lizard will have four more AC than usual. It's called bark, eh, but it could be scales. Fourth level druids get an ability score improvement. We're gonna invest in wisdom since we can keep it while we're monstering, and it'll also help with our casting since it means that we can prepare another spell per day, like lesser restoration, to remove an effect of blindness, deafness, paralyzation, poisoning, or an effect of a disease. Basic actual doctoring is always nice. I like this build because it could be a normal doctor or a monster. 
Locate animals and plants lets you know where certain animals and plants are within five miles of you. Cinamus psychedelia are incredibly hard to find. That's a psychedelic rock gecko. There are estimated to be less than 500 in the wild because of overdevelopment in the area. It's sad, but less sad. You don't have to worry about not having a swimming speed anymore in your wild shapes, so crocodile is now an option, and the climbing speed from athlete stays, so you can bite harder and climb up walls. Horrifying. Fifth level druids get third level spells. Conjure animals lets you summon some animals to help you out. One beast of challenge rating two or lower, two of one or lower, four of one half or lower, or eight of one fourth or lower. That means four crocodiles to help you while you're a crocodile. They hang out for an hour depending on your concentration. Six level moon druids get primal strikes, making your attacks in wild shape magical in terms of overcoming resistances in case you ever have to fight the rhino. You're kind of a wild card, even worse at working with the other villains than the other villains. For this level spell, revivify lets you bring a creature back to life that died in the last minute, but the components are kind of expensive, so maybe get Oscorp to fund it if you can. You can also turn into a beast of challenge rating equal to a third of your druid level now, but there isn't a good flavor option until level 15. Well, mm, kind of. Seven level druids get fourth level spells. Polymorph lets you turn a creature into a beast of challenge rating equal to or lower than their normal challenge rating. Lasts for an hour, and unlike the wild shapes, you also get the soft stats, and since it requires concentration for an hour, you can't hold other concentration spells up at the same time. But you can use it to turn into beasts of challenge rating seven or lower, so you can rock giant crocodile form, which is like a crocodile, but bigger. Eighth level druids get another ability score improvement, cap off your wisdom, and start rounding up your strength, because next level, we're going to get a backup option for lizardification. You can also polymorph yourself into a T-Rex here, which is the king lizard. You might totally lose your mental faculties, but now we're mixing paleontology and herpetology. That's big science. For this level spell, freedom of movement means that your movement can't be reduced, you can't be restrained or paralyzed, and you can break out of shackles with five feet of movement, which might explain why it's so hard to keep you locked up. Dominate beast lets you force a wisdom saving throw on a beast, fully controlling it for up to a minute. If it fails, maybe attack a zoo, then get a Komodo dragon on your side. They actually have very good mouth hygiene. The myth about their spit causing sepsis comes from observing them in captivity where they attack water buffalo. The buffalo had a natural instinct to run into the water when injured, so the sepsis they died from was the feces-filled water infecting them. More lizard facts. We'll bounce over to Barbarian now because Barbarians really can supercharge their wild shapes with things like unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and constitution modifier when you're not wearing armor. This actually isn't as good as Barkskin if you're feeling more like a defensive lizard, but you can technically wild shape into more dex based animals and they'll do better with this. It just won't be in character. Rage will be, though, giving you advantage on strength checks and saves, resistance to bludgeon and piercing and slashing damage, and extra damage on your strength based attacks. You can't concentrate on spells or cast new spells with this, but think of this as its own concentration spell that you cast before you start raging to become an extra dangerous mutant lizard monster. Second level barbarians get reckless attacks, letting you make your attacks with advantage while giving your enemies advantage to attack you. I don't think Lizard Hurt is making the best decisions, but a natural instinct to bite things isn't always bad. You also get Danger Sense, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws for traps and spells you can see, skittering out of the way like a Spherodactylus Parthenopian. That's a lizard that could fit on a dime. It's really cute. Lizard fat. Third level barbarians can choose a primal path. Beast barbarians get some natural weapons from a form of the beast. If you want to bite, it will deal 1d8 piercing damage and you can heal half your proficiency bonus once per turn if you're below half your health. If you choose claws, they deal 1d6 slashing damage and you can make an extra attack with it once per round. And if you choose a tail, you have 10 feet of reach, it deals 1d8 bludgeoning damage, and you can add a d8 to your AC as a reaction. This is probably the best option for you, but be flexible. Pick what you would like to carry into your wild shape, or just use this for more transformations up to you. Fourth level barbarians get another ability score improvement or a feat. The skill expert feat gives you a free point to round up your strength. You can take investigation for your skill of choice, but probably don't lick things when you're not a lizard. That could be weird. Really, I want expertise in medicine because you're a great doctor. Fifth level barbarians get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action instead of one. So even with your backup wild shape rage thing, you'll still be able to handle yourself. You also get fast movement, letting you move 10 feet faster when you're not wearing heavy armor, which you definitely won't be. You're a lizard in a lab coat. But that's enough monstrosity. Let's get more science. Ninth level druids can learn fifth level spells, greater restoration removes a curse, a charming or frightening effect, or a reduction to hit points or ability scores. That's some really good medicine, like Nobel Prize winning stuff. Tenth level moon druids get elemental wild shape, letting you use both of your wild shapes to turn into an elemental, but that's, uh, that's not in character. The jump spell is, since it tramples your jump distance for a minute, also not a concentration spell, mix it with long strider, freedom of movement, and a concentration spell before you come to lizard, you're gonna be a very mobile lizard. 11th level the druids get a 6th level spell like heal, to instantly heal a creature 70 HP, but also remove an effect of blindness, deafness, or disease. That's extra strength acetaminophen, like the kind I avoid because of my acid reflux. That would be the big cure I'm looking for, just something to stop me from getting heartburn after I eat too much. 12th level druids get another ability score improvement, I don't know, your whole thing is healing people, or turn into lizard 
wizard, so you don't really need anything. Maybe intelligence. You're smart. Wait, a brainy barbarian? There's a reason I love this build. 13th level druids get 7th level spells. Regenerate. Heals a creature 4d8 plus 15 instantly. And another 1 HP every 6 seconds for an hour. It also repairs limbs in 2 minutes. You did it! Your ultimate goal! Well, for one side of your brain, the lizard side of your brain wants to turn people into lizards or eat them. 14th level druids can eat as many people as they want, as long as they're moon druids, since you get thousand forms. This lets you cast alter self at will, giving yourself a natural weapon that deals 1d6 plus your strength modifier and damage with a plus one to attack and damage rolls. You could also get an underwater adaptation to breathe underwater and swim, or change your appearance. The last one's not really in character, you're not a plastic surge. Our capstone is the 15th level of druid for 8th level spells and I don't want any. You have enough spells, so why come here? Why not go somewhere else? Because as a moon druid, your wild shape can now be a giant crocodile. Is that good though? Let's talk about that here. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you have tons of healing spells and skills to take care of the sick and needy. But if you're tired of being nice and just want to go lizard shit, you can do that, turning into a lizard and ripping people to shreds with two wild shapes pairing with four rages to om om nom. That also makes you a great tank with physical resistances, an extra 170 HP from your wild shapes, and up to 10 T-Rexifications for 1,360 extra HP if you never drop concentration. For weaknesses, outside your lizard form, your AC is terrible. If someone can drop you before you transform, that's going to hurt. You also can't cast spells while you're raging or wild shaping, so you have to choose if you're a man or a monster. Finally, putting all of your buff spells together, starting a rage and wild shaping can take some time. Your enemies might not give you that time. Thankfully, becoming a T-Rex is pretty good by itself, pretty fast. Do your best to be a good guy, but also don't feel too bad if you want to be a horrifying monster. Bite slash and tail slap people if you need to, and do all of your experiments on yourself. Just make sure that you're healing up the party when you're not a lizard. Otherwise, you might not get to be part of the Sinister Seven. Oh, it's Sinister Six? Oh yeah, you're out. That's a bummer. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak Mango for more Tulak fun.